Have you ever wondered if we're alone in our galaxy? And if not, how many intelligent civilizations are there? Is there even a way to empirically estimate the potential number of civilizations? It turns out there is. It's called the Drake Equation. Next, let's discuss this equation and see just how many ETs we can expect to come calling. Stay tuned. The Drake Equation is the number of technologically advanced civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. Now a couple of things to start off the discussion. First, the number of technologically advanced civilizations. So what does that mean? A technologically advanced civilization is one that communicates long distance through radio or some other medium that can propagate through space. Why is this required? Why can't we just determine if cavemen exist on a planet? The challenge there is, if there is intelligence but they're not communicating, then we have no way of detecting that they're there. We would actually have to physically go to that planet in order to detect that they're there. Secondly, we limit it to the Milky Way galaxy. So why would we limit it to our own galaxy? This is because even the closest major galaxy, Andromeda, is 2 million light years away. That means that any signal that we send would take 4 million years to get a reply. Therefore, it's not reasonable to consider life in other galaxies. So we limit it to our own, which still has some challenges, because our own galaxy is about 100,000 light years in diameter. So it would take an exceedingly long period of time even to get a reply if there was a technologically advanced civilization on the other side of our own galaxy. So let's dig into the equation a little bit. So we're going to develop the components of this equation one at a time, and we are going to go from highest certainty on the left-hand side to lower certainty on the right. So the first variable we'll consider is R star. It is the rate of formation of stars in our galaxy. So there's a number of ways we can calculate this. However, all of them seem to indicate values between 1 and 5 stars per year. So we've talked about the Goldilocks zone and some of the limitations even of a planet within a Goldilocks zone. But we've already learned that just because a star has a habitable zone and there's a planet within it, it doesn't guarantee that life will exist there. Similarly, as it turns out, that about half of the stars that form are in groups of two or more. Here's an example on the extreme end of a large cluster of stars, a globular cluster, which could have hundreds of stars. It is going to be very difficult to find a planet in a system like this that has a long-term stable orbit. Now recall that it took life on Earth billions of years to develop to intelligence. In systems of two or more stars, it may be very difficult to find a planet that exists in a stable orbit for billions of years. It just so happens that our sun is a single star, so it's possible to have a large number of planets in stable orbits. As you start to add stars, even one additional star makes it very difficult to find stable orbits. The next term we'll consider is F sub p, the fraction of those stars with planetary systems. So recent studies have become very efficient at finding planetary systems around other stars. As it turns out, there are now 4,000 or more stars with confirmed planets around them. And that number grows every day. Just about every star that we look at has planetary systems. Conservatively, 75% of those stars have planets. However, the number could be closer to 100%. Keeping in mind, though, that those planets may not be long-term stable means that the number could also be lower. Just to be conservative, we'll go ahead and we'll consider 75% and see where it takes us. Our next element, n sub e, is the number of planets per solar system with an environment suitable for life. Our discoveries of the Goldilocks zone revealed that, conservatively, you could consider our star having two planets. Now, just as a reminder, we discussed the fact that just because you're in the habitable zone does not guarantee that you're going to have life, or that it will develop into intelligence. Our next term, f sub l, is the fraction of suitable planets on which life actually appears. So that means, of those planets in the habitable zone, how many of those will life actually appear? So here, we assume that the fraction of suitable planets did develop intelligence, and so we have a 100% likelihood that if the conditions 
are long-term stable, that life will develop to intelligence. Our next term, f sub i, is the fraction of life-bearing planets on which intelligent life emerges. So again, with a sample size of one here, conditions on Earth were long-term stable, life began, and because of that long-term stability, we developed to intelligence. So we'll assume here a value of one. Our next to last term, f sub c, is the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signs. So the idea here is, if there is a intelligent civilization, like for example, dolphins, if they don't release signals that can be detected from space, then we will never know that they're there. So on Earth, humans developed intelligence, and we have a need to communicate across large distances. As a side effect of that, we are leaking signals into space that are detectable by other civilizations around other stars if they exist. Our last term, L, the length of time such civilizations release detectable signals into space. This one is a particularly challenging and perplexing one to determine. For this one, we have to consider things like, how long is it likely that a civilization will exist from the time it develops the capability to send signals until the time when that civilization ceases to exist? Our own civilization has been around for thousands of years. In that time, we've experienced lots of things that could impact our ability to send signals. So since we've discovered the ability to broadcast in the 1930s, we've been very close to nuclear war on many occasions. A nuclear war would certainly wipe out civilizations that would otherwise be able to communicate and to be detectable. Additionally, there are some other earthly things, like pandemics, that could kill off populations as well. We also face threats from space in the form of meteors and comets or other galactic things like gamma ray bursts that could render life on Earth extinct. So we don't know how long a civilization is likely to live on a given planet due to all of these factors. So for our purposes, we're going to assume a value of about 2,000. Now you could make reasonable arguments to smaller or larger numbers, but this will give us something rather conservative with which to use in our calculation. We can take all of these terms, multiply them together. Here are the values that we've come up with to conservatively estimate the number of technologically advanced civilizations in our Milky Way. And we find that there are about 15,000 communicative, intelligent civilizations in our own Milky Way. Now that may seem like a large number, but when you consider the size of our galaxy, this is a very small number. Now there is one other limitation that we need to discuss about the Drake Equation. It specifically calculates the number of technologically advanced civilizations in our galaxy right now. It does not consider the fact that there may have been a race of beings that lived on a planet around a distant star and have now died off, or that there will be in the future after humans are long gone. It only calculates that number today. There is another form of the equation that takes this into account and determines the number of technologically advanced species that has ever arisen. That equation can be written this way. If you want more information on it, please go to the website. However, it's not something that we will be held responsible for in this class. I just want you to know that it does exist. So I encourage you to do your own research, apply the numbers that you feel comfortable with, and determine for yourself the number of potential life forms that are out there. Thanks for listening, and until next time. What are we going to do tonight? Well, if I may proffer a suggestion, in bars all across this great nation of ours, Thursday night is ladies' night. <laughs> Which means, as the evening progresses, we will get better looking, courtesy of 99-cent margaritas and two-for-one jello shots. <laughs> Come on, Howard, the odds of us picking up girls in a bar are practically zero. Oh, uh, really? Are you familiar with the Drake equation? The one that estimates the odds of making contact with extraterrestrials by calculating the product of an increasingly restrictive series of fractional values, such as those stars of planets and those planets likely to develop life. N equals R times FP times NE times FL times FI times FC times L. 